As a dad, I'm very fond of driving, because it reminds me of how I used to have actual control over my life. You've got a big throbbing machine under you, responding to your every whim, even if you still haven't figured out how cruise control works, the open road rolling away below you, and the kids are literally strapped down and unable to complain as you drive off a pier into the sea. Which is one kind of Pacific Drive, but not the Pacific Drive we're talking about now. A new indie game that's like the point where Jalopy meets Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl if they use Subnautica as a condom. And for those of you waiting for the Emperor Nero thumb up or thumb down so they can get back to their busy life of glamorous premieres and diplomatic functions, Pacific Drive is a game that I do like. Because it reminds me of that part of driving where reality starts melting around you and you have to put your foot down to escape the bouncing robot hedgehog things, which is my other favourite part, but my wife always has to be a buzzkill and grab the wheel and nag me to get my narcolepsy looked at. So this is a game that's going to be tough to explain. You're a dude driving a car. Hmm, well, yeah, it's, that wasn't the tough to explain part, I'm still figuring it out. You drive your car into a radioactive exclusion zone, because I guess you didn't have enough problems in your life, and crash into a big fat breakdown of reality itself. Fortunately, you find a new car, but it's a magic car that latches onto your mind as immovably as the original DuckTales theme tune, and prevents you from leaving the zone. The only way you can escape now is to help a bunch of argumentative nerds on a group call explore the ever-changing terrain of the zone while crafting upgrades for the car and helping out with a bunch of science experiments that mostly conveniently involve driving to places in very fast and exciting ways. The story of Pacific Drive has a few layers, some thinner than others, like a poorly crafted caramel slice. The thinnest layer is the aspect of it that applies to the player character. That's the millimetre of chocolate on top that cracks when you bite into it, tilts up and goes right up your nose. Because at the very end of the story campaign, after the final boss driving sequence, we just respawn back at the garage and the earpiece nerds go, hooray, you did the thing that made your car stop being evil and let you leave the zone. You can still use it though, and you can't actually leave the zone because then the game would end, so bugger all has changed visibly or functionally, but here's a credit sequence anyway. Why not work to get all the best car upgrades that call for that one endgame resource that's really hard to find so you can be extra prepared for all the bugger all that's left to do? The margin thicker layer, which I suppose would be the biscuit base that was baked for slightly too long and will end up taking the path of least resistance through your fillings, is the story of what actually happened to the zone and what's currently going on with it. I don't entirely follow why it keeps changing and how driving very fast through it helps in any way. I listened to the nerds' explanations and it was like listening to the overarching lore of the Shin Megami Tensei franchise being explained by Egon from Ghostbusters. The big chunky caramel layer I can actually get my teeth into is the nerds themselves and their personalities, because they're about as interesting and well characterised as a bodiless voice with the physical presence of a fart can be. But you know what? I'll take it. It'll do because all I want for the story is an excuse. It could just tell me that driving my car keeps the baby owls nesting in the carburetor warm, and that'd do, because driving the car is fun. Gameplay is primarily purpose produced for podcast patronage, and about as post-dad as post-dad gets, combining the three dominant components of the dad psyche, driving around, engine maintenance, and packing the shopping. Oh, and nuclear disasters. You head out into a randomly generated map, plan your route to the exit road, and enjoy a nice Sunday drive through the countryside, pausing at houses and parked trucks, and quietly weighing up if it's worth the effort to park, break in, and chainsaw all the electronics for parts like an extremely eager bailiff who didn't hear the instructions properly. Are you enjoying this nice relaxing drive, player? Certainly am, game. I just found a free spare bumper that I can fit in the trunk if I turn it sideways. Glad to hear it, because now we're going to the next area where the roads are littered with exploding electrified mannequins, stone pillars rain from the sky, and half the roads are flooded with lakes of radioactive baby puke. Well, I'd complain, but my doors just fell off, and I need to decide if I'm going to stop to glue them back on in the middle of this Costco parking lot full of giant pulsating gummy bear erections. See, it's the same blend of long chill-out periods broken up by sudden apocalyptic violence that sells Elite Dangerous, or the process of buggering every single animal in a zoo. I admire the way the game resisted the temptation to have combat to focus on testing your driving skill, although you do occasionally have to crowbar acidic hedgehogs off your bumper like dried snot off a shower wall. It's never not exciting when you decide to end your current shopping trip and have to floor it to the exit portal as reality begins to collapse, probably because it seems like you have less time than you actually do. A yellow ring appears on the map and starts shrinking, and the first time I realised I wasn't going to outrun it, I was about ready to brace myself for a vengeful recently buggered elephant experience, but then it went, oh no, I'm just the yellow ring, the red ring is the one that sodomizes. yeah, he's coming next, but running away from me was pretty exciting up to now, huh? So in retrospect, it's not a hard game, I never once died or failed a single run, but it always felt like I was escaping by the last wrinkle of my foreskin, and that's what counts. Then in between runs, you fix up the car and prepare tools and supplies in your home base, but don't panic, the extent of the engine maintenance is as follows. Do you have an engine? Yes. All good. What you mainly do is scrounge up supplies to fix up all the beaten up doors and panels and craft a couple of upgrades, and there's this thing where your car acquires bizarre quirks like the radio turns on when you go into park, or the windscreen wipers fall off when you rearrange your testicles, and if you can identify a quirk in a little detective game style drop down interface, then you can fix it, which again feels a lot more involved than it is. Boy, this is the sort of game that could really delude you to thinking you're a competent person, huh, who knows how to drive well and maintain a car and stand up to those bullying robot hedgehogs, but what is video gaming if not one well crafted delusion after another? Pacific Drive certainly is a just plain well crafted combination of gameplay loops, core mechanics and interesting enough story elements, perhaps we might aspire to more than just interesting enough, but I'm not going to kick the armadillo out of bed just because the jellyfish might be next on the schedule. <laughs> Second Wind is thrilled to announce the adventure is nigh card game. We've partnered with the award-winning folks at Slugfest Games to bring the world of adventure is nigh to their rambunctious card game, The Red Dragon Inn. 
Step inside the illustrious Adventure is Night Club and assume the role of Mortimer, Dabarella, Sigmar, and Grinderbin for an evening of post-questing debauchery. Engage in a friendly competition to see who can be the last adventurer standing after a little roughhousing, a bit of gambling, and a whole mess of drinking. Featuring show-inspired cards like Grinderbin's stickers, Mortimer's Stone of Truth, Dabarella's cookies, and Sigmar's knives. Why does he have so many knives? The Adventure is Nigh card game Kickstarter is live now with lots of fun stretch goals, including adding Moped as a playable character. Head on over to the Kickstarter to show your support and secure your copy of the game today.